Hi, this is Brandon Gibson from Beacon, New York. Thank you for listening to the Crown Refs podcast. Serve the game. All right, ladies and gentlemen, coming at you virtually live from Marist College in the McCain Center, Brandon Gibson's old stomping ground. I'm here with Brandon. How are you doing, sir? I'm all right. Can't complain. Beautiful day. I appreciate you joining us. And I just wanted to kind of follow up with you and get your feedback on the IPR service and the report. How was it um, kind of breaking down the report that I sent you? So thank you for taking your time out, first of all. Um, you know, it meant a lot to me that you uh, really took the time and, you know, showed me that you have, uh, you know, perfected your craft as far as evaluation um, for individuals, uh, for referees. Um, you know, the service itself, you know, was, was second to none as far as the feedback that I received. Um, you know, we spoke before. My my biggest concern was that, you know, when you go to some of these camps, sometimes, you know, depending on what camp you go to and what's your situation there, you know, you may not have the success um, and get the feedback that, you know, you desire. Everybody's, you know, level is different and everybody's <clears throat> meters are different. So, you know, the fact that you took the time out to, you know, go second by second, you know, during my game, which, you know, I, to me was a, a you know, pretty highly competitive section one uh, A game. Uh, section one to me is probably some of the best basket. Section one A is probably some of the best basketball you're going to get in New York State. Absolutely. So, um, you know, I, I, I thought that that, that, that um, exact game was probably a good touching stone, you know, even though, you know, I, I, I didn't work over a year and jumped back in and, and came back. But, you know, I really appreciate you for taking the time out and doing that for me. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Were there any parts of your game that I was able to send you that were kind of eye-opening to you? Like, wow, I didn't realize I was doing that or... So, yeah, so, you know, the most... The, the one thing that I was like, okay, you know, I, I received different feedback consistently about um, was when you moved me uh, virtually um, in, in the lead position. I you moved me you a little bit closer. Replaced you, yes. Right. You moved me a little bit closer. Um, and normally, you know, I like to stand a step or step and a half back from where you placed me um, because I, I, I feel like I can get a better picture, especially in the paint there. Okay. Um, you know, and I can also, and, it, and it's hard with you know, two-man systems. For that game was a two-man system. So, you know, I still have responsibilities for, you know, other areas on the court that I have to kind of monitor. If it was a three-man, I probably would have taken, a, you know, half a step up, get a little closer to the action. Um, but that feedback to me was, you know, really telling, especially when you picked me up and put, and put me there. Yeah, you could just see a little bit of a difference in it. And I think it allows us to be more connected to the play and more connected to the players. And quite simply, just have a better feel for contact, for judging contact, right? When we're too far away, sometimes we lose that feel of what the contact actually is. Um, and no, no matter if it's two or three person, I just think it's a good, good new guideline for you to just get a little bit closer to the baseline and, and not feel the need to stand so far back. Yep. Fair enough. Very good. Anything else um, that you want to discuss? Any questions? Um, Are there any things I need to clarify about the report? No. The, I mean, the report was um, very detailed. I actually sent it to um, my board president. Cool. Um, and actually, my former board president, so they both got it, um, you know, telling them to kind of, uh, you know, to see if they would be interested in this in this service, um, you know, and, and to maybe spread it out for um, you know other officials who are looking for such detailed information. Awesome, I love I love this. The word of mouth still is king, so appreciate appreciate you sharing that. 
Um, let's see, do we want to go over some of your signals or do we want to hop right into the place? Um, we can go right into the place. Okay. It's fine. It's funny. I used, I used to ref this coach a lot in men's league because he was a local coach, um, kind of in my area, but I know he moved up your ways. So now you had a chance to uh, work with him. So I got a funny story about that. Me, me and Cody, um, played against each other. First time I ever met him, we played against each other. I think it was at uh, hoops in the sun. I think okay. I, did I tell you this? You did. I believe you mentioned a player story you had with him. You can yeah, go again. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I, I had him and we were chirping. We were playing against each other. We were chirping back and forth and I come back up. And then he's playing in the next men's league that I'm playing on later in that night. And it's like, I get more of them. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, he did, he did a, a tremendous job with those kids at Poughkeepsie consistently. Um, turn them really around that program around. Yeah, I mean they're normally a powerhouse, but I know they did have a, a a little bit of a dry spell. So he's revamped that program. That's good. Um, the first note I put was your chopping of the clock. Yep. Let's take a look at how you chop the clock. I mean, this is just a preference. Again, you doesn't really matter. But the way you're holding your hand up, I would like to see it more out out front your stop sign a little bit more visible out front instead of that turned. Again, it's a, this is me nitpicking. This is a preference. It doesn't really matter if you turned your hand three inches this way, but that would just be my preference. What, and let, can we do a little fist chop? Make it a little bit more pronounced? Absolutely. Okay. Instead of that little flicker and then you're out, it just looks a little bit more official. It, you're right. I, you know, I think it's more of the uh, for that one, the layoff, which is not necessarily an excuse. Um, all right, Let, we're just going to let this play run because I think uh, one of my next notes comes at 719 in the lead lead position. Um, and I know the video quality is a little bit more more optimized now on Zoom, so we can let it rock. All right, this is the note I had for your lead position. Let's just see how far, far you go. So uh, remember, when the ball is across this basket line, we're in, we're closed down in the B position, which you are. So nice job here. Um, then you start to take a few steps back. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you could take a step, a step or two towards the end line. Yeah, you know what? And, and sometimes, too, I, I got to catch myself um from fading out towards the corner just because like if a long shot you know i want to be on the especially in a two-man system i want to be on that sideline um you know to make sure i'm there for my responsibilities for a any long rebound so i try to fan out a little bit get a better a wider view okay um let's take a look at your first whistle of the game 530 at a foul and lead i wrote it's tough to see the contact on film but i gather you called a foul on the swipe down on right. the shooter's forearm. My question is, um, did, did it have any effect on the shot? And were you in the best position when you blew the whistle? So I probably could have passed on that one. Um, I feel like it, it may have affected the shot, but that's on you know rating scale. That's probably a five or, you know, or so. So I could have passed on that one. So you just um, measured the contact on a scale of one to ten. Five. Yeah. Being, five yeah. being legal. Yeah. You know. Um, um, that swipe down on the arm, right? It was to the forearm. So I would, you know, if you're looking at it now, you know, maybe another step in closer. Um, you know, I had the kid. Uh, I think it was blue four from uh, the swipe down from behind, right there. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, did that affect the shot? I don't, at my position, I probably could have let it go. Um, you know, I don't think my partner could have picked it up and I didn't really want to miss it. Mm -hmm. uh, I had contact, it's just the amount of contact. So that mentality of, I didn't really want to miss it. We shouldn't have a fear of missing something like small. It's right. okay, like if you're not 100%, 
positioning affects play calling here. Also be conscientious of when you're running parallel to a play on a fast break and saying to yourself, okay, I may, I may not be in the greatest position here. It's got to really stand out as a legal contact. Mm -hmm. Knowing that if I was in the, a more dependable position, I might have had a better look at the point of contact and decided to pass on it just because you were in better position. So All just right. take that with you moving forward, understanding when you're not in the best position to have a little, be really patient. And did you point to the player just there? Yes. All right, we don't need to point to the player because everybody in the gym is going to know who the foul's on once you report it to the table. So anytime we can eliminate excess signaling, it makes our job easier because we're doing less tasks and focusing on the more important ones. Right. Good hit signal. I like your presentation. Good presence at the table. That's well done. Okay, 510 trail positioning. So we looked at your lead position and let's take a look at the trail. I think you were a few steps behind the 28 on a few different plays that I mentioned. Did we freeze? Oh, we're buffering. So I want to see you adjust there as the ball's getting swung and you know that, down that, a little bit. that player is setting up for a three-point shot. It's going to make you look more urgent, show more effort, and, and show more athleticism. I think it's a very athletic look for referees when we're making those late position adjustments on jump shots. Because it's, it's an athletic movement. We got to hustle. It's usually a sidestep into your signal. So it's a way to present athleticism. And I know you're a former player. So as it's being swung right here, that's where you have the game awareness feel for the game to know we have a jump shot coming. I need to just step down. Slide to the O. About the O. Because on this play, it's not being contested. So there's nothing to miss. On this, you know, but moving forward, you know, you're going to have a more engaged matchup with the defender. We want to be able to step in between the offense and the defense. So nothing happened there, but that's just um, something you could take in, into other plays. So just a non um, nonverbal communication play. We have a double whistle. Try to have a cadence whistle um, from the from the trail or in your secondary. And just give that lead that kind of first um, opportunity to blow the whistle, just so our whistles don't come at the exact same time, if possible. So all I said here was there's no need to point to your partner to take it. I just think we can give him a head nod or not even say anything. You know what would, what would trigger him to take it? You just switch to the lead. And that is alerting him that, you know, he's going to the table and you're going to him to replace him. Again, something very small, but I don't think we need to make it obvious and point and say, you take it, so to speak. Does that make sense? Yep. 1,000%. And again, stop me at any time. Um, I'm just kind of running through each play. I don't know if we'll hit all of them. So I want to get to the, the best ones. Yeah, no, no, no. We're good. I'm watching it too. We're living it. Absolutely. So let's look at your block at 347. I had some, I had some good, or let's look at your block at 347. This came off strong. Good, good, great signal. And then you indicated on the pass, that's perfect. Okay, you showed the little knee because he hit him with the knee. Oh, the coach was asking. Coach was asking where he hit him? Yeah. So don't answer the coach. I know you answered him directly through your presentation of signals, which is cool. 
but don't allow a coach to interrupt your reporting. Mm -hmm. Don't answer him before you report because we're going to wind up forgetting something if we go, if we let, we let that conversation take precedent over reporting the foul. Right. Because I've, I've, I mean, I've messed up so many times doing that. <laughs> it just comes from experience. It comes from me not handling my duties in the right order and then having to backtrack and wonder why. And it's always the distraction from, you know, something else like a coach or a player. I want you to be a little smoother with how you present your numbers too. You kind of just raise them. Like your block look great, your hit at the table look great, but I just want you to practice smoothing out your numbers. Almost like this happened yesterday. <laughs> and the thing is, you know, so many games, had so many games after. Oh, good. First how, how, is, how have you felt on the court since the report? Uh, better. You know, I, I've been trying to, uh, you know, implement some of those things, you know, those feeler things. Um, I think I think a lot of that was probably um, conditioning, like I told you before. Um, you know, actually getting back in the gym and playing and running and working out. Um, you know, after such a layoff. So I feel, I feel much better. Love it. So with two, you have a foul and lead. This is a great decision to clean up this play and call a block and you show a really clean wave off signal. Do not allow coaches to change your mind or convince you that your decisions are wrong. It's funny. That's all they try to just convince us that what we just did is wrong. You know, it's just yeah, every time. mind games. Always show conviction. Good. Love. I love the wave off. One clean wave off. Well done. Step in between the players. Maybe say something to them here. Make sure everything is uh, running smoothly in the dead ball. Now Cody wants to come talk to you. I'll talk to you once I'm done reporting the foul, coach. Okay, now he's dem does a little back down on you, demonstrating. What did he have to say? Uh, he was play. he was saying that. Uh... Uh, white 25, very physical presence all year round. Um, you know, I think he was a three year starter there, if I'm not mistaken, but he you know, was a strong kid and he, he tried. He, Cody said that he jumped into uh, number four, which forced him, you know, to bump him back. So he thought it was the offensive initiated contact because the kid uh, kind of maneuvered his way, but you know, that kid has been, you know, playing harder than normal um, than the other kids that he plays in. I think that's why he was successful. He plays much harder than the other kids. So after Cody told you his version of the play, how did you respond? Well, I, I told him that, um, I told him that the, the offensive player was trying to, um, you know, was trying to get to the lane. And um, although, Although we did have contact that was initiated originally from the offensive player, um, you know, the defensive player was still, um, still made illegal contact to him. And so Cody that, uh, you know, he was bumping him in. The other kid that was next to him also was uh, right there on him also. Okay. Just, I just want you to keep your explanations short and impactful. So try to not describe so many different uh, yeah, the, this is this is more me detailing it for you. Understood. Understood. Um, um, yeah, but you know, and again, this is all for you moving forward in your next games, right? Right. Just try to be impactful, one to two lines, rule based explanation. Coach, I didn't have the defender in a legal guarding position, and then I had him creating the legal contact. What did you see? I'm talking to 25 now. Um, now that I think about talking to 25 now too um, about the chirping. Okay, good. You know, I told him, uh, you know, he's too good of a player to go back and forth. And I, I don't want to give him a technical foul for something little. I love that you gave him a compliment, which is going to make him pay attention to actually what you're saying. And then you deliver your message. So hopefully it sinks in. I like to say that, that same thing to players. And it could be the seventh player on the team. Hey, you're too good a player. <laughs> You're too good a player to be chirping. Yeah, the game they don't know. They could be bad players, but in that case, I meant that he's a good player. So that was good.
and and anything after you you talk to Twenty Five? Uh, no, not so much. You know, it, the harder part of this also um, for it actually, you know, it being my first game, they also played the day before, and I had a close game. So, you know, to have back-to-back -back games with the same team, home and home series. Um, you know, an overtime game the night before, it, it can get chippy. So I, I wanted to, uh, you know, avoid that from the beginning. Um, well, from the first time we had it. Okay, rebounding foul here at 136. I like your quick whistle to clean up this rebounding play. Let's just try to get in the habit of using one hand. So we stopped it with the right. Do do this way. And then just stay with the right. Or if you want to go with the left, just drop your right before you go with the left. So we don't have two hands up at the same time. Again, it's another cosmetic thing, but I think it looks much cleaner and more more of a stronger presentation when we're just doing one hand. So go ahead, talk to me. So no, on that play, um, that exact play, I don't know if you can rewind it th 30 seconds or so. So um, Cody comes to me after the play. I don't know if you realize that and asked me, well, didn't ask me, he told me to watch 25 because he got, um, you know, he got a pretty hard foul the night before and that he, he called him pretty much a dirty player. Um, he called him a dirty player? Yeah, pretty much. That we're not interested in any of his opinions on a player. So, yep. You could say so that. when you see him walking up, um, He's saying to me now, oh, you got to watch 25. He, uh, you know, that was intentional. He's a dirty player. Um, I know he plays hard, but. I know, would say, I would stop him there. Whoa, 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 whoa. Coach, please don't make any personal comments towards the other team. I'm not going to allow them to talk negatively about you, and please don't talk negatively about them. That's, you know, that's just one way of running the dialogue. We're not listening to the coach tell me he's a dirty player. That's just not a conversation that we need to have. Right. You know, he can express his frustration in other ways. Um, but I, I just look at that as an opportunity to play offense. I'm always looking for opportunities within a conversation to play offense. If he says something, he slips up. I know I have ammunition to go attack. By attack, I just mean right. run the conversation. I understand. Um, and, and even here, this is the second time where he's interrupting your report, where he has his arms up and he wants to talk to you, but he's not letting you report. So I would mention something to him there. Go, Co coach, coach, I'll be over to you in a moment. Please let me do my duties first of reporting the foul. Because if we don't say something, then he's, then he's just going to do it again next time you call a foul. But Brandon, no, bro, Brandon, Brandon's getting hit. And, but you, you haven't even got to the table yet. Right. Like it's just a distraction. I don't I don't want you to have to deal with those distractions. So let's just nip it right away. And again, this and I think this is something to control easily because he doesn't look like he's being difficult, but we just need to let him know the ground rules. Cody, let me report the foul before you start chirping at me. And, and, you know, just because coaches want an explanation, it doesn't mean we need to stop what we're doing and go give it to them. They're very entitled with, with when and where we should meet them and, and go give an explanation. They think it's like on site, on demand, that we're just automatically going to go give them an explanation. You know, I found myself this year more than ever after I make a call and I see a coach is like, I just run right by them. Maybe not right by them. I mean, just, I run down the court. I'm not going to say if I'm on the sideline and I know they need, I need to say something to them. I'm going to run by them. I shouldn't say that, but I, but I mean, I'm running to my lead position. And then, and then they're not, then they see me turn my back and I'm running to, to go get ready for the next play. And then, it's just forcing them to move on because they know they don't have my ear there. You know, and like, again, the game is waiting for this conversation to end and you're still having it in the front court now. Now you're turning back, looking at him. So 
I just feel like we can we can handle him in the backcourt, say one or two things, and then keep the game moving and don't let the conversations linger. Right. Anything to add to that? I agree. Okay. I agree. I, you know, and I, him and uh, and the Lord's coach, I should have walked them both back, um, respectively. You know, when when that happened. Yeah, we don't want to ever have conversations outside of the box. Again, opportunity for offense. Coach comes to talk to you outside of the box. Whoa, 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 whoa. Coach, I'll come come follow me back to your box. We'll have a conversation in the right spot. Doesn't look good on the court. So I'm just curious about this travel that your partner called, why your hand stopped. Were you gonna did you have a travel too? So he came in, he came in. To my understanding, uh, if I remember this, he came in late with that travel. Um, and I, I was running, obviously running sideways, um, you know, and I caught it. I didn't, you know, I shouldn't have raised my hand, but once um, he blew it, I didn't even, um, I didn't even blow it dead. I just raised my hand. Um, because I was gonna call it. Okay, I would say to stay out of the stay out of his area. I mean, this play is right in front of him. No need for you to be looking through the play. Right. So, yeah. I, I, I absolutely right. Um, absolutely right. Again, this comes down to for me, my thought process on it originally. Like it, you know, the two man system, tough. That mm -hmm. like that. You know, trying to give him as much support on a, in a pressure, pressure-like situation, as far as um, you know, the defense up. I wanted to give him as much support, and I, I really thought that he missed it, and I didn't want to miss it because I saw it. Well, I understand you're trying to be a good partner and hold down the crew here, you know, but I'm, not unfortunately. But this is just this is just not a perfect system that we have where we're just going to get everything and not miss anything right. it's okay i mean if your partner misses something in his in his primary and it's a travel there's really not anything that we can do about it i don't right. think you know it's just we kind of got to just live just own your primary and, and let your partner live with that one and be okay with okay if he misses a travel I don't he think misses it. To come save save the crew here. I don't think this is a crew saver. You know? And I just don't think it's good mechanics, too. We're never going to call a travel that far across the court in the lead. So just be okay with your partner missing that. Okay, 748. Eliminate the excess. It's tough to see the contact you called. But more importantly, we have a few other things. Number one, discard the unapproved signal that you used repeatedly on the spot to sell the call to the player. When we use foreign signals, it can confuse people as I think it did on this play. Um, the coach is across the half court line again with his arms raised complaining. We need to start playing offense and notify him of the guidelines. And then the fourth thing I wrote was when we call a foul within the first possession of the quarter, it needs to be correct or it's going to wake everyone up, even the sleeping mm -hmm. coaches. So, you know, I know you have to come out ready to ref and we don't want to miss anything within the first five seconds of a quarter, 10 seconds of a quarter, but it, but it will wake people up when we have that early, early whistle that may, that may not be obvious. So keep that in mind. Right. What was the illegal contact? Uh, the defender came under him as he was uh, elevating for the shot. Under him and did what? Kept moving under him, literally riding under him. So he got beat. He got beat baseline and got caught behind him. Uh, you know, not even on his hip, but on his backside, almost his butt area. So he gets beat here. And there he's, so once the kid jumps, he's still behind him and going forward right there. He's still going, you know, forward towards the other, towards the baseline while the kid's elevating for a shot. So if you look, 
uh, pretty closely, 25 leg gets kicked out almost because he can't land because he's getting pushed. Okay. It's more with the body than. Uh, and again, than I just want you to explain it because you have the best look. On film, we can't see that. So you, you, you know, obviously we're gonna trust, we're gonna trust your decision. I'm not trying to convince you that it's not. I'm just trying to get all. Well, of this one, this one to me, to me, um, was a pretty dangerous play. Um, after you get beat and you know somebody's going to lay up and you just keep going under them, you know that kid is was athletic enough to you know kind of catch his balance, but his whole left foot was in the air because four was behind him, like immediately behind him. Okay, so after you call the foul, then let's see some of the signals that you're showing on the spot. Okay, one, two. So you're you're showing the what what signal is this? So I, I that was a like a makeshift uh, cylinder play. Um. Wait. You're probably indicating like, oh, he got pushed from behind. Right. I think I've done something similar to that before. But again, this is not the push signal. So the, the contact here is a push, right? It's a push from behind with, with probably the defender's chest moving forward into right. the offensive player's back, so to speak. That's, right? that's exactly what it was. So foul on the spot. I'm not showing anybody what the foul was on the spot. I'm just going to run to the table and then present my push thing. Not an underhand push, not that bear, um, like a bear grip. hug wrap. <laughs> just, just keep it simple, you know? Cause I think anytime we're selling on the spot, then we're not totally sure of ourselves. Cause why do you have to sit here and explain to the player what? Cause he put his arms up. Now we have to give him an explanation. No, no, we don't. Right. Yeah. Okay, let's watch it one more time. And then knowing that Cody has not let us report fouls two to three times, it looks like he's doing it again as you're entering um, the reporting area. I don't know if you can see uh, his left leg 25 and how high it gets up towards the end. If you look at his, his sneaker, I don't know, it's hard to see from this angle through people. It's okay. I I trust you on the contact. I, I just want to get to the other elements of the play. So he's across half court out of his box with his arms up. Good still image there. <laughs> what is going on? Right, right. All right. So we went back, whatever. Push, two shots. Okay. So less signals on the spot and proper mechanics at the table. All right. Okay, another interaction. We love coach interactions. We love breaking these down. So 616, I wrote, he's barking again. After more comments to you during a live ball about a no call, you went over to explain your call instead of dictating the terms of the dialogue and sending him a direct message about the proper way to communicate. So this is something I do a lot. When coaches call me over, most of the time, or majority of the time, I don't wind up talking about the play. I wind up talking about the way we're talking about the play. So instead of going to give an explanation about the call, I want to go give him instructions on how to communicate. I'm not going over to talk to you about the call coach. This is the fourth time you've thrown your arms up. You're not letting me report. You're, you're becoming a distraction. Coach, I'm very approachable if you have a question. If I have time to answer you, whether a timeout or a dead ball, I'm happy. I'm all ears to talk. But I can't have you shouting at me from across the court. I can't have you yelling out your comments onto the court. It's becoming a distraction. Is that fair? Yeah, yeah, I, I got you. I got you. Okay, great. Now we're running to our position. Instead of trying to sell him on a call that he disagrees with, we are, we are dictating the terms of the dialogue. So I like that you went over to him, but now is where we play offense. So tell me about your conversation. What'd you talk about? Um, 
here. Uh, can you rewind back to the play? Mm -hmm. It might have been a, uh, if, if this is the one I'm thinking about. It might have been a block charge situation. Okay, there's really yeah, no. I don't remember what he was. I don't, I don't remember what he was um, complaining about. It might have been a play before. It was the play. The, it was probably the play before because you showed that underhand push again. Yeah, it was. Um, <clears throat> it, it was probably uh, one of the block charges. So Lords, this is a rivalry game, right? And Lords historically, um, I had this game a few times, two or three games already between these two, and. Um, I think uh, Lords tried to set them up for a lot of offensive fouls. Um, you know, sometimes they flop to try to get those fouls. Um, and I think probably that's what we were talking about. And I said, no, you know, the kid flopped. I told him to get up. That's why I didn't call anything. Okay. So we just want to change the content there and make it about guidelines and not about play calling. Okay. Okay, offensive foul here. Boom. Good, good. Well done. I like your poise at the spot. Again. Okay, I was just making sure he wasn't talking. To you. I'm just, I'm just trying to protect you from him, man. It's <laughs> okay. All right, that was a really, really nice call. Anything to add on that? It was pretty, pretty clear. Yeah. Um... The, he, he took it in the chest, that kid. And, you know, there's a few times before he tried to attempt the charge and he was flopping. That time he, he, he got squared up and got contact. Okay, okay. I like this play. Happy feet. Happy feet. So if you, you know, if you, if you really, um, you know, sometimes I don't know what it looks like on camera too much. I didn't um, second by second here, but he, t he takes like four little steps in the paint <laughs> yeah, before so the contact. This was, this is a good decision here. Cause I wrote, you know, when options present themselves, sometimes plays present multiple options. Now you can just say, I think the travel occurred before the charge. That's why we went with the travel. But that's what I told Cody there, when he asked. Yeah, there, there are two options, right? If you, let's say you can't see the travel there, now we have a crash. We have another decision to make. But I think, I think when we have options to take the violation over a foul is always is always better for the game. That that's that's why I decided to go that way. Um, you know, I think my partner came over there because he thought I called a, a charge, but. Mm -hmm. You know, I um, I thought I signaled it pretty strong. Yeah. And I avoided, um, you know, putting that kid into further foul trouble. I just got with the travel. Yeah. Set it a charge. A good, good game management play. And again, like you may see this play present itself as a out of bounds, out of bounds option or push in the back on like a rebound play where we're staying here, you just stay out of bounds. So again, options. So locate the times in the game where you do have options. All right, your mate, your three pointer mate. Make sure we have open hands. Don't stay with, don't stay with the three fingers as your mate. See how you went up with the three fingers. You, your your attempt was three, which is okay. But then when you make it, we go open hand. Okay, you got a clean up foul here at one twenty one. Good, good. As soon as, as soon as defender grabs his back, quick whistle. Good presentation with your number. Just make that hold signal a little bit stronger. I know I gave you some tips in the video. Just present it higher and pop it out a little bit more. I think it's a good hold, but I think it could be a little bit more amplified. Okay. And was our order correct here? Because I know I gave you kind of a sequence of signals. 
So we're going to signal foul, point the direction, say the new direction. Did you point after the foul here? Uh, I don't remember if I did. Can't see it. So I don't know if it doesn't. But normally, you know, normally I'm here, and then I'll say here if it's uh, you know, I say here, but I'll it's point it to media spot after. So if we're going the other way on a rebounding foul, go foul this way. If we're staying here on a rebounding foul, go foul stays here. Right. Then well, they were, they were going a long way. Um, right, we're, going, we're going down. So just point. Right. right. You're right. And then you can add to the, then you could point to the spot. It, we don't have to eliminate pointing to the spot. It just shouldn't come in that, sp that point of the order. Correct. I, I gave my partner, um, a late spot foul or a late spot um, throw in for the, the ball. And the yes. way you the way you beckon in subs, don't just use your hands like this 10 times. Just one big beckon. One big beckon. Okay. Instead of short little, come on with your fingers. Come on in, come on in buddy. <laughs> So 6.36 of the note was table reporting, trying to slow yourself down. Okay, it looked like the defender didn't start off vertical, right? right. Arm was out. And then, and then you know what? They always finish arm straight up and they look at you with your arms straight up. And I always say, I, I understand your arms are straight up now. They didn't start straight up. Yep. Uh, I think it was 12 with his arms in a cookie jar. When you're... Uh, report that said, try to slow yourself down at the table, sustaining each signal for at least a second. Think 2-2, two, two. oh, 1-2, one, 1-2, two. One, two. hit 1-2, two. two shots. Yeah, so think white, 22, 1, 2, hit 1, 2, two shots, 1, 2. So I was a total of about five or six seconds. Instead of white, 22, hit, two shots. Not to say you rushed, you did that fast, but I just, I want you to have that cadence when at the table. One, two, three, four, five, about five seconds. Okay. Yeah. And um, 354, you said travel, question mark. I said, did you miss a travel here? It's okay, because I missed 10 this year, LOL. It's probably about seven, or seven to 10. A long time out. Long time out, yeah. There. I don't know, was it? Yeah. I see a little happy feet again. Same kid. Same kid. Okay, so let's the pull this down. So catches it with his right. Right, but to me, yeah. to me, from where I was looking, and this is one of those things where, you know, if I'm at the R, I'd probably get an even better look. It didn't necessarily look like he caught it with his right foot down. I think when I picked it up, his left foot was down. Okay. The pass, I'm over there on the pass, and then I snapped my head back and his foot's already down. Listen, if we have to rewind and slow down travels to find it, it's, it's usually a sign that we shouldn't call it live. Yeah. But upon further review, is that a walk? That's a walk. Okay, I agree. Absolutely a walk. I <laughs> but, I, you know, I was on the other side of the court here. I turned. You know, but maybe not. I, I, I couldn't even been at the R because then I, the play is on the other side in, in a two-man system. It's on the other side. So, it's you know, it's one of those things where I, I'm a little higher than I normally like to be, you know, which kind of causes me to uh, – so I go up. I'm up and moving towards center court. I mean, do you think he should have came and got the travel that we missed in trail just now? No. No. Same concept, lead to trail or trail to lead in a two-person. So 
<clears throat> One more thing, if you can back up to 254. Yeah. In backcourt here. Yeah, I think we so, like this play a lot. This is a hard backcourt play. What do you have? So Cody didn't like it. Um, Who cares? You know, he's pretty demonstrative. Who cares? Demon demonstrative. No, I know. I'm, I'm just about saying. it. I was reading, I just read the, the, yeah. the blurb you put it for your report. You know, <clears throat> that's 1,000% a backcourt. You know, um, one, two, three. The ball, all three parts are over. Correct. The kid is, you know, two and a half feet in the backcourt still. Yep. Look at he's in the air and catches it. So his last location was the backcourt. Yep. Good. Okay. So let's look at coaching management here after you make it. Don't even. Okay. I said don't even look at him. Good. You didn't look at him, right? No explanation. No, don't even talk to him. Just there's no conversation to be had, especially in the fourth quarter when it gets to crunch time. Mm -hmm. My explanations are done. You've ran out. You know, unless it's mandatory that we speak about something, but it's not going to be what did you have on this play type talk. Well, well, I think I think he understood. It was more of a frustration or trying. You know, and I, honestly, in that case, he probably was trying to to change my mind about it being back or put doubt in there. But there was no doubt because it was on top of it. I know you were, but I don't think there's any any reason to even acknowledge him. You made, your, you made your call, fill the spot, and just hustle. Like right now, I want you I want you running back to the new position. This way, there's no – then then he definitely can't interact with you because you're already in your new spot. But you're kind of lingering, and you're you're showing him that you're available to talk pretty much a little bit. I, I told him um, – he asked me, Brandon, who was the backcourt? So the coach absolutely was in – Point to the spot of the foul. But you know, why, are you, why do we have to respond to that? That's not a question. Right. That's that's something we ignore. There, you know, we gotta I want you to develop your skill for selective ignoring and knowing what to address and what not to address. That's not something we need to address. All he did was make a call. That's not a backcourt. Okay, but you already made your call Bless and you called it a backcourt. So there's no discussion that needs to be made. All right. Next play. Okay, last play is 47 1. I wrote uh, Coach's Box. Uh, the co Lord's coach spent numerous possessions across the mid court line. Um, did you think of mentioning to him about staying in the box? Obviously, you're not, you're not paying attention to the coach and lead here, but it, it, uh, it doesn't look great that both coaches are on the same side of the front court. The high school rules. He's not <laughs> abiding by the CDC rules either. Yeah, right. Look at it. And he stayed here too. What is he now? He's starting his five second closely guarded count? With with my partner next to him. <laughs> um yeah, you know, I I should have mentioned that to him um at some point. Um, you know, my partner also since he's there too. So one of us should have picked that up. Yeah, I mean, this is gonna be your partner's duties, but if he doesn't mention anything and the coach stays on that side of the court in lead, I might just blow my whistle and, and coach, coach, please back in your coaching box. Cause how long is he going to stand here? Well, right, you know, technically he is in a, co in a coaching box. He's it's not his. <laughs> Good point. Um, so I have Mr. James Jenkins about to hop on the call next um, in a few minutes, but until he, until he knocks on our virtual door, we have a few minutes if you want to ask any follow-up questions or is there anything else I could help you out with? Uh, no, I mean, thank you again for taking the time out. I really appreciate it. It's my pleasure. And thank you for, you know, being connected to Crown Rust for over pretty much since the beginning. You know, you've been very supportive for over two years now. So that means a lot. You're, you're I consider you a day one supporter. So much appreciated. No problem. If there's anything else I could do to help you along the way, obviously you have access to me. Continue to send me plays, stay in touch. I want to track your progress and see your growth. Um, and yeah, my doors, my doors are always open. You know, the one thing like up here for um, 
Yeah, I'm gonna bring you in and say hello, right? But you can okay. keep talking. There's only about um, there's only about five, maybe six guys on my board that probably ever did college, and there's 200 change reps, and we have a very, very big board because we cover a lot. Yeah, and we're in four, we're in four counties. You know, so and did did he quit? Did he leave? I guess. I guess he heard your voice and he backed out. <laughs> okay. But we're, you know, we're in four counties, so it's like, you know, as far as beyond high school, I don't know if a lot of these people um, up here, you know, that I work with had the aspirations of doing college or advancing. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so there's not necessarily a, a, a structured path, you know, or a laid out plan for people, um, which makes it tough. So, I, you know, when I saw the opportunity for, you know, to do this IPR, I wanted to make sure that I picked the game where I was vulnerable so that I know that, you know, this is me at, you know, here, not at the top of my game. I've been off, so it, it really was an eye opener. It was really helpful for me. That's great. Thank you so much, Brandon, and have a great rest of your weekend. You have a beautiful daughter. And uh, thank you. That's the luck with the pregnancy. Tell, tell Mr. Jenkins I said hi. Where, where's he? Where's well, he? I don't know where yet. We'll, we'll, we'll get him, but I'll definitely say hello. And, uh, what's it, what's his school okay. at? Where, where's he at? Oh, we're going to Baylor University. Oh, we're going to Texas. They, they, they may be going back home uh, in a few days. So we'll see. Okay. All right. Thank All right, you. Brother. Take care, man. Later. Thank you for listening to the Crown Refs Podcast. Serve the game.